Hey, welcome back to Fix It With Jerry. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I made these concrete dumbbells for less than 30 bucks a set. Check it out. You can find a link below with a list of tools and materials that you'll need, but there are a few things I wanna point out first. The concrete I'm using is high strength, and a better option if you can find it is crack resistant fiber reinforced concrete. It actually has small pieces of fiberglass in it. You don't want to use mortar mix or stucco or anything else like that. An 80 pound bag of concrete is about five or six bucks and will make, well, 80 pounds of weight. So two 40 pound dumbbells, for example. I'm not the type of person to throw my weights around, but I have set these down pretty hard on the grass or rubber gym mats without them breaking. The weakest link will actually be the metal handle and it'll bend if you're abusive. Speaking of, I used EMT conduit and cut it down into sections. It's galvanized, so it's somewhat weather resistant, and a 10 foot section will set you back about 10 or 11 bucks. If you don't have a hacksaw or something to cut this with, then you can buy iron pipe in various lengths, but that is gonna cost you a lot more. The concrete form tubes I'm using are eight inch tubes, but not all eight inch tubes are created equal. These are the same SKU number off the same shelf from the same store, and one measures under eight inches in diameter and the other is just under eight and a half inches in diameter. This will throw your math off a little bit, so I recommend taking a tape measure into the store with you when you go to buy these. I was able to reuse these tubes at least once with some tape and cooking spray as a mold release agent, but after that they tend to soak up too much moisture and fall apart. Concrete weighs about 0.087 pounds per square inch, so to figure out how large each dumbbell needs to be, I had to do some calculating. If you're not using the same eight inch form, form tubes that I am, then you'll wanna solve for the volume of the cylinder in square inches and then multiply that by 0.087 to determine the approximate weight of each side of the dumbbell. And remember you're splitting that in half for each end. You can also just click the link below to download a PDF chart that I made. It's free. I also wanted these dumbbells to be about the same length overall, and that was possible until I got above about 55 pounds. I still wanted about 5 inches of handle in the center to grab onto, so I wound up making the heavier dumbbells a little bit longer. Anything over 65 pounds just gets too big to really be practical, and anything under 20 pounds is too small to really set the handle in. If you're one of those people that has to have matching plates at the gym because you feel like it makes a difference, then these concrete dumbbells probably aren't for you anyway. Also, don't weigh the dumbbells that you bought from the sporting goods store or your gym for that matter. Unless there's some kind of calibrated competition quality, you'll probably be pretty disappointed with their consistency. All right, let's actually get to making something here. I make several marks around the form tube so I can use a rubber band to help get a really straight line. You want this to be as exact as possible. I then start cutting with the hacksaw just to get uh, an opening to get the razor knife in, but the cardboard pinches really bad and it's hard to cut. So I'm kind of stabbing and inching the knife along instead of trying to drag it. The best way actually is to use a chop saw, but I know not everybody has one, so I wanted to show it could be done without it. Even if you're planning on reusing the tubes, you'll need to cut two of these plus a spacer for the handle in the center. Once you've determined how much spacer you want in the center, how heavy the dumbbells need to be, and how thick each side is going to be, you can kind of reverse engineer how long the handle needs to be. I cut mine at about 16 inches. I wanted at least five inches of handle in the center and enough metal on each side to sink about halfway or more into each concrete section of the dumbbell. Prep an area to mix and pour the concrete. You want a nice flat surface that concrete won't stick to like a scrap piece of plywood. When you're mixing the concrete, you'll want a consistency that's kind of like cottage cheese. I don't really know another way to describe it, but too much water and you'll saturate the form tubes, causing them to fall apart, and an overly wet mixture also weakens the concrete. On the other hand, if you mix it too dry, you'll wind up with air pockets and it'll be harder to work with. Add a few inches of mixture at a time and kind of shake it down as you go. You can also tap the sides of the form tubes to help work out any air bubbles.
once the form tube is full, set the handle in about halfway into the mixture and fill the handle with concrete. That'll help strengthen the handle itself. Be careful not to push the handle so deep that it actually comes out the other side. You don't want that handle exposed on the end of the dumbbell after it cures. I cut a scrap piece of plywood in an 8 inch square and drilled a hole in the center to help me align the handle. It's not really necessary. Uh, you could also use a level if you want it perfect, but there's really nothing wrong with eyeballing it either. Let this concrete cure for at least 12 hours and leave the form tube on. I had to do some retaping on this one because it soaked up some moisture and started to release itself. Set up the other side of the form tube and have your spacer ready. It's a good idea to kind of test fit and make sure everything's going to work out before you start mixing concrete. Uh, you're going to repeat the same steps on this side and use that spacer to help hold the top half of the dumbbell in place. I cut the spacer long ways beforehand and then taped it back together. This just makes it easier to get off after the concrete dries. You're not trying to cut through that thick cardboard again, uh, you just have to cut the tape. The set I'm making right here is actually 65 pounds, so a little over 30 pounds on each side, and that's probably the max for the cardboard spacer in the center. As uh, the moisture from the concrete mixture itself soaks into the cardboard, it weakens the whole thing and it, it could collapse if the concrete doesn't cure before the, the cardboard breaks down. This set here actually got rained on and it was the second time I had used the form so they completely disintegrated after that. You can take these form tubes off after just a few hours but you want to let them fully cure before you actually use the dumbbells, drop them or anything like that. It's a good idea to sand them down too and knock off any loose pieces of concrete. You don't want these falling in your face if you're lifting them overhead. You could take this a step further and even paint them with some oil-based rust-oleum or something like that to help them hold up outdoors. If you are going to be leaving these outside, you'll want to take the form tubes off anyway. The first time they get rained on, they'll just fall apart. I'm pretty happy with the way these turned out. Let me know in the comments below if you tried it and it worked for you or if you tried something different and that worked too. I've also thought about making a barbell version of these and uh, they go up in weight, you'd have more room to go with heavier weight on a barbell. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.